We're not done, we're never done. Here are yet more things in Stardew Valley that you probably didn't know. And if you did know it, no you didn't. The coconuts and coconut trees work the same way as seeds do for the other trees. So if you somehow manage to reach Ginger Island at level zero foraging, it won't drop coconuts because you can't get seeds yet. There's a few tips that show up when you start the game that are dependent on how many times the game has been started. For instance, the fifth time you open the game, you get a message saying that you can shift click to buy five items at a time. After opening the game a few dozen times, there's no new tips for you, with the exception of three milestones at 100, 1000, and 10,000 game starts. Now while perusing the secrets page on the Stardew Valley wiki, you might have seen that if you give Lewis his purple shorts while visiting Ginger Island, he'll wear them for a month. That's a lie. I did this exact thing and I couldn't get it to work for the life of me, and beyond that, there's not a single image or footage of him ever wearing it, so yeah. I spent like an hour and a half trying to recreate this and I couldn't get it to happen and I'm mad about it. In multiplayer games, there's a small chance that someone is designated as bad at music. This never happens to the main farm owner and only happens if your player ID is divisible by 111. The only differences are if you play the music emote, it'll be off key, and the piano in Elliot's cabin will play the wrong notes, making the piano easter egg impossible. Everyone knows about Santa flying by during your profit summary on the night of winter 24th, but did you know he'll also fly by during the mountain cutscene if it's winter 25th? A lot of people consider the Geode Crusher to be one of the most useless items in the game. However, it does have one use. The items you get from all geodes you open are predetermined by your game seed, and it all goes on a list. The list for what you open at Clint's and from a Geode Crusher is the same, except the one for the Geode Crusher is one behind. So, if you open a Geode at Clint's, You'll get the exact same item from a Geode Crusher if you crush the same type of Geode immediately after. A lot of people always talk about putting Grass Starter under a fence so that it'll spread without your animals being able to eat the source block. But did you know that you could also do this with any machine? So you can find an extra use for those band-aids machines that you're using for all those eggs. The only people that'll put requests on the Help Wanted board are people that you've spoken to before. So, if you want to get a lot of friendship with someone really quickly, only talk to them when starting your new file. Getting a perfect catch while fishing gives a 2.4 multiplier to your experience gain, and getting a treasure chest gives a 2.2 multiplier. If you do both at the same time, in total you'll have a 5.28 multiplier. If you do this while catching an Iridian Legend, you'll get the largest single experience gain in the game at 1,346 experience. For reference, that would be enough to send you straight from level zero fishing to level four. If you have a Junimo hut, their colors are usually random, but you can change that to one of 21 different colors depending on what gem you put into the hut. Every single mineral on the minerals page contributes to a color. You have pink, red, orange, dark yellow, yellow, light green, jade green, green, cyan, light cyan, blue, purple, light purple, dark brown, brown, cream, light gray, black, white, rainbow, and with the most possibilities of all, gray. And if you have trouble remembering all of that, here's a useful guide that I'll put in the description. The third most profitable thing you can fish up that isn't a legendary fish isn't a fish. It's void mayo. You can fish it up at the witch's hut as long as you haven't given any to the henchman, and you don't have one in your inventory, which can be gotten around by just putting it in a chest. The only fish that sells for more is the lava eel at 800 gold, and the ice pip and blob fish are tied at 500 gold. And all three of those fish have a much smaller chance to be hooked than the void mayo's 25%. New money-making strategy unlocked. Grass is set to spread like crazy on Spring First, mostly because it needs to make up for the complete lack of grass during winter. But if you go out of your way to plant a little bit of grass starter on winter 28th, the next day you'll find that it is spread everywhere. 
You know how the mines is different every single time you leave and enter again? If you're playing on multiplayer, the mines will actually stay the same all day even if nobody's currently in it. So if you need to leave and stock up on food or something, you can come back and all of the ladders will still be there. If you somehow manage to get an artifact spot into your inventory, they actually have a description that says, uh, how did you get this in your inventory? It made a boo-boo. The copper upgrade for your pickaxe is actually the most important one. It cuts the amount of hits for almost every rock by half, but that rule isn't always consistent for the future upgrades. For instance, all gem nodes take two hits from both steel and gold pickaxe, and iridium nodes take both two hits from both gold and iridium. Compare this to iridium nodes taking 16 hits initially, all the way down to 8 with the copper pickaxe. At Grandpa's Shrine, there's a stone star drop that only appears after you've gotten perfection. This is a tiny, tiny detail that I doubt many people have noticed. One of the reasons the Mushroom Cave is usually a pretty good choice is because it fills every single day, whereas the Fruit Bat Cave has a chance of filling every day. Unfortunately, this is actually unintended. It was accidentally changed in version 1.5, and will be reverted back to every other day in version 1.6. And here's just a couple of tidbits of information that I found out while doing research for another video. You might have wondered why the spa opens up specifically on the third day of summer. Well actually, it used to be the first day of summer, but players were thinking that the noise you're notified about overnight was the one that's killing their crops, when it's actually just the change of the season. So it was pushed back two days. According to Stardew Valley's Greenlight page from all the way back in 2012, there was going to be 80 achievements compared to the 40 that we have now, and all of the character portraits were going to be hand-drawn instead of pixel art. You can catch one example of these hand-drawn portraits on Shane's page of the Stardew Wiki. Breathtaking. The walnut door on Ginger Island doesn't actually take 100 walnuts, and this is something I discovered recently in my Imperfection run, where I get through the walnut door with the lowest completion percentage possible. Somehow, I didn't manage to go through the door with exactly 100 walnuts. I had 101. If I quickly use cheats to just give myself one single walnut, you'll notice that the count on the door still says 0 out of 100. So for some reason, the door just straight up doesn't count your first walnut. I'm not sure exactly why, but that's how it is. If you somehow manage to get around the bouncer to try and get to the casino early, which can be done by going out of bounds with the out of bounds trick, he won't let you through. Instead, he'll place a bomb at your feet and call you a little punk. Speaking of the casino, a little known detail, the slot machine is always in your favor. Not only that, but it's also affected by daily luck and the food buff luck. The largest possible buff you can get to your chances occurs on a perfect luck day, a 20% increase, along with the special charm, which is obtained by trading a rabbit's foot at the truck next to Joja, after you've gotten the secret note for it. That's another 5%. And then with the maximum food buff, which would be a magic rock candy giving plus 5, and a ginger ale cooked with key seasoning, which if you didn't know is a rare item bought from Mr. Key, that adds a plus 1 to any food buff that you cook it with, will give another 2, giving a total buff of 7 luck. Each point of luck gives us an 8% boost, totaling to 56% from the food buffs, and altogether that is a 1.81 times multiplier to the chance of each result on the slot machine. The most common win, which is a single cherry, will go from 20% chance to a 36.2% chance, and the best result, which is 3 star drops, goes from a 0.1% chance to a 0.18% chance, which doesn't sound like much, but it's almost double the chance it was originally. At full luck, you'll only have about a 27.6% chance to lose. And that is all of the extra knowledge I've gotten from the last few videos or so. If you knew any of these, please yell at me in the comments. Thank you all for watching, see you all in the next one, and good night.